Hello, welcome to the second manager interview. Uh, there hopefully will be one more of these right near the end of the season, hopefully time for safe by then. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, we've got a second chance to talk to Mike, uh, ask him about the few questions about the uh, change in fortunes as such. Uh, I asked on the Facebook group for a few questions, a few of you have uh, popped in <laughs> have popped in the comments and uh, I'll try and get as many as I can. Um, but yeah, thanks for all the likes on the videos and sharing it and stuff like that, it's great stuff. Uh, hopefully we can have a good strong run to the end of the season, but let's get inside and talk to Mike and see what he's got to say. Right. So this is the second chance I've had to sit down with you and have a talk about the previous games and stuff, because it's only fair to talk to you about what's happening currently rather than the future, because we can't plan for the future at the moment, we need to get the games done and dusted and settle in the league. Um, so my first question is, uh, switching to the 5-4-1 stroke 3-4-3 system seems to have helped us against the form teams in the league in the last two games. Do you feel that's going to benefit us against the teams that like to stick men behind the ball? Um, I, don't, I don't necessarily think it's maybe an opposition thing. I think it's, uh, it's something that we train from pre-season and, and we put a lot of messages into them about how we would go about our business in a 3-4-3. So it's not a five four one; it's a three four three because we want to attack. Um, so, so a lot of the sessions that we're doing at the minute now are reiterating messages they've already got earlier on in the season, so they they know it. We came away from the, come come away from that formation maybe um, October time, late October time, because um, there was there was a need or felt there was there, there was felt there was a need in here that we might need to go for two up top. Um, Plus which injuries at the back as well. Not necessarily, no, because we've got we've got a lot of a lot of defenders. Obviously, we brought Joel in to to I think cater had three centre backs at the club out at one point though, and then you had to yeah. But Burnsy well. can play right centre half, and and there's, there's ways around that if we if we stuck to what we believed in. I think you know I don't think we'd have been in a in a position like this anyway. But they, you can see they're more comfortable um, playing in that now. Does the pitch help? Possibly, yeah, because three four three is a passing do dominate possession uh, attack wide overloads and you need to be able to play to be able to do that so um, I don't think it's necessarily an opposition thing I think it's more it's more you know circumstantial and you look for threats and um, strengths and weaknesses in the opposition and if you can exploit them and I felt that we could do that this week and um, certainly against uh, both teams we looked at how the 3-4-3 might work and I think we've shown on both games that we you know we knew what areas we wanted to exploit and I, mm -hmm. I alluded to it a bit in my interview after the game that there was areas that on the pitch that we wanted to nullify. Nobody else knows where that is, um, and there was areas where we wanted to expose them, and, and I think we did that, you know. And um, so I was pleased. Um, clearly, with Burns and Sharp relishing the chance to get forward, do you plan to try and strengthen up top to add a bit more uh, attacking threat with Asante because he seems a little bit isolated up there, even though Knights and Connor are doing their best to get up there. Do you not feel we could do with an actual physical striker helping him rather than the two? Because <coughs> Knights is more of a shadow striker, a ten man playing and trying to get in support, and Connor's just he works his socks off and he plays everywhere you're playing. <laughs> mm. Well, in a three four three, if you look at it, it's based on um, the the old Ajax team from from the seventies, and I've, I've researched them extensively. And yeah, you, you could say that Quaz is isolated. Maybe he's doing a bit of more of his better work deeper. Um, because of the way we're we're working, um, but if you look at the game in particular on on Saturday, Quaz is very good at holding them, but he's a better footballer than people give him credit for, and his touch is immaculate. So he brings people into play. He's very strong. He's holding defenders off, and he's bringing knights into play in those pockets that you talked about. We always need a threat going in behind because otherwise defenses uh, for the opposition can squeeze up, and it means there's less spaces for us to play. Um, so we talk about how we spread and stretch the team. So Burns and Sharp going really high, we we need them wide is to pull their their full backs out, which then means we've got spaces to go in between. Now, if you look at the sat game on Saturday, for example, we worked on something previously where we're getting centre backs stepping in and we're getting the wide overload because we're getting three players on one side of the pitch against their two, they can't follow them. So as soon as we move the ball and any forward movement. Joel should have scored from one, it. Yeah. That stands out, but that's a pattern that we did on Monday night, where the ball went from one centre back, where they get pressured. Their two strikers come across. We move the ball to the opposite centre back, who steps into acres, and as soon as he passes the ball, everyone forgets about the centre back because nobody's marking him. So it's it's just I guess yeah okay I would say that at times he might be isolated when we're having to defend a lot of um, we have spells of pressure against us. 
I think the last two games, I think we've had less pressure. Um, there's been probably uh, two spells of five minutes where um, we'd be a couple of corners to deal with and different things. At, at times, we're getting we're getting both wingers having to track back, which is fine. Um, you've got to do that in position with them. But yeah, I think answering your question, uh, I think you know I've got till Thursday to bring a striker in, and and, I, and that's something that I, I would like to do just to ease the pressure. And I would say that sort of alludes to my next thing with uh, Zach going and the money to, uh, supposedly recouped, well reported that it's been recouped. Uh, was you planning to invest it on anybody else? You've just mentioned that you're trying to get a striker in, but whether that be free or whether investment. A um, couple of questions from people. They said, uh, again, firepower up front, keeping us goals. You've just mentioned that, so that's fine. That's answered Dave Chapman's question. Uh, Kev Clark would like to know, he said, big fan of Jed Davis. Good to see him back at the club. Uh, is he available with a clean slate now because you're in charge? And how much of a part does he have to play in the future? Yeah, I like Jed. He's a fantastic footballer. He's um, he's been unlucky with injuries, and um, he's had spells in the team and done well for us. He's still got a lot to learn. He definitely has a clean slate. You know, he, I've always got on really, really well with him personally, and I think he's got attributes that could help us towards the end of the season. And that's why you know Charlie Shaw was unfortunate not to be on the bench on on Saturday because Charlie Shaw again has been. Has been brilliant. They're both really, really good players. So, um, for me, I think I on Thursday, uh, Thursday, I said to the both of them, I said, "There's one spot on the bench. Whoever outperforms the other one's gonna gonna go on there." And that's the kind of competition you need. So, it depends what we're looking for. But in a two-man midfield, um, with Verma and Shaw back to his best the last two games, and Verms being what Verms has been. It's going to be difficult to break that up, but if needed, he certainly will give us something. I was going to say my next question was about some of the reserve players or uh, squad players stroke under 21s. Um, I know it's not fair to bring the likes of names and stuff and say, is anybody going to get a chance? But do you feel that the reserves are good enough to challenge for first team places that are there? Certainly, yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, That's the whole purpose, the purpose of us having the 21s and, and the scholars. And I think there's a number of players that could do well in our first team. It's just the situation at the minute dictates that it's not the right time for them. Um, you know, it would be extremely brave of me, you know, to go and say, right, there's a 16-year-old lad, in you go, go and uh, go and get yourself in this in this situation. Um, but certainly, once that's um, once that's sorted, and, I, and I've got no doubt it will be sorted in the next few weeks, and, and we're in a better position, I think you know, yeah, I'd love to give the fans an opportunity or a little glimpse of the future of what kind of young talent that we've got through because it really excites me. Just a fun one to end on, uh, Julie Grant asked if you had an open checkbook, any player in this league who would you sign and why? In this league? Yeah. Wow. Wow. Right now? That's tough. I think positionally, um, obviously like, you know, you can go through positionally, you go goalkeeper, you go bells would be great to have back his stability. Um, I thought he was amazing on Saturday. Well, any other keeper, we, we win the game. You know, he's made the save from Joel first half, let alone the one from Verms and different things. But, yeah, so him maybe. Um, in terms of defenders, I'd probably go uh, Brackley, Dean, Gaz Dean and Goodger. I think they, them two are, are really good. Uh, midfielders, I'd probably go... Um, Salford, they had Norton and, and Walker who I thought were just another level they did just, they're too good for this this league really um, I thought they were yeah, I thought they were brilliant but then you've got uh, Gatala at, uh, at Kidderminster who's again a talent and then up front, I don't know maybe not losing Steich, that would have been a nice one um, but other than him maybe Joe Ironside would be great for us right now. I think he'd be perfect foil for for Quaz and and the players in and around him. So, and I, to be honest, and this is, this is the truth, based on the last last couple of weeks, Southport second half aside, I'm not swapping anyone because do you know what, these lads actually care. They really really care. They know the situation they're in. They're fighting for their lives. You can see that Tuesday and Saturday, people look at it and go, Harrogate were poor. No, we made them look poor. What we did to them. And their manager comes in afterwards and says exactly the same. Credit to us. We we outworked them. We outplayed them. I think we outfought them at times. The only thing that we didn't do was outscore them. And 
Yeah, that's what it's based on. That's that's what we should full be doing. Team, full team training showed the last twenty minutes or so they did pour it on quite strong. I think mm. we were, but that was just the effort we put in. Yeah, and then we rode our luck with a couple of the corners. I think four in a row was it? <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, but then it happened on Tuesday night. We rode our luck on the Tuesday night. We rode our luck. You see, the harder you work, the more luck you get, and that's what I think that, that we're getting the group in a place. I think we're only scratching the surface with the group, and I keep saying that I've got a top five squad. I, I'm, and I and I keep saying it, people keep laughing at me, but I've got a top five squad. Now you look at Salford and Harrogate games, they're both top at the time, and both games we should have won. Now you could say, oh yeah, but we should have won, but we didn't. But we've proved against the teams that they've doing it consistently. All right, I'm not saying consistently we're good enough because obviously we are where we are. But I'm telling you now, these players are good, really, really good. Putting a good platform and building blocks in to make the consistency there and then when we do it's only going to prove that we are a good side and hopefully the results will follow yeah yeah definitely so, well thank you for your time hopefully we'll see you in four weeks just before the games were game and we should be safe <laughs> will be will be okay right right so uh that's the end of the interview um thank you very much for mike for taking the time to speak to me we'll see him again in four-ish weeks time hopefully we're in a better position he's pretty confident which it's always good to hear um like i said he's happy with the players they're slowly starting to show their worth hopefully the fans can get behind them and this can be a massive drive towards the end of the season and with him saying the team he's got currently are good enough to challenge top five top six that's only got to be positive right and he's looking to get a striker in well we'll see you at Coors ashton uh, at the weekend um the vlog should be up monday Maybe Saturday night, dependent on how I can get back and uh, edit it. But uh, we'll be safe, we'll say Monday. But um, yeah, thanks for everybody liking, following and all that stuff. Uh, we'll see you in the next one. Peace.